Hello, welcome to Bite Size Med. This video is on the different ways diffusion happens across the cell membrane. Transport across a cell membrane, it can happen in two ways, passive or active transport. Passive transport means it doesn't need extra metabolic energy like ATP, while active transport, it needs ATP. Diffusion is a form of passive transport, and why it's passive is because the movement is along a concentration gradient. Across the cell membrane, diffusion can happen in two ways, simple and facilitated diffusion. In simple diffusion, the substance doesn't need help getting across the membrane, while in facilitated diffusion, it needs help, like from proteins. An example of this would be the carrier proteins. And we'll get to the different ways in a bit, but first let's see what diffusion is. To understand this, we take two solutions separated by a membrane. The solution has a solute and a solvent. So for example, in a solution of salt water, salt is the solute and water is the solvent. The concentration of the solute in the solvent is different in the two solutions. One is higher and one is lower. The difference between the two concentrations, that creates a concentration gradient. Now let's assume that the membrane is permeable to the solute, which means it's going to let the solute pass through. Molecules from both compartments have kinetic energy and keep moving around, bumping into each other and into the membrane. So the chances of them crossing the membrane will be higher when the concentration is higher. So the solute diffuses from higher to lower concentration, until the concentrations of the two solutions are equal. This is equilibrium. So what drives them to move is the kinetic energy of the molecules themselves. No additional ATP was required. Since diffusion happens from higher to lower concentration, the movement is along or down the concentration gradient. Even at equilibrium, the molecules, they still keep moving around, but the concentrations of the two solutions, they stay equal, and there's no net diffusion that happens at equilibrium. Now the same thing happens across the cell membrane. Substances diffuse into and out of the cell depending upon the concentration gradient from high to low. But there's a barrier in between the cell membrane. So for the substance to diffuse, they will have to get through that membrane. The membrane is a lipid bilayer. So if it's something that's lipid soluble, like oxygen and carbon dioxide, it can diffuse across the membrane from high to low. So one of the factors that affects the rate of diffusion is lipid solubility. What else can affect it? The size of the concentration gradient, inside versus outside. If there's a bigger gradient, meaning there's a bigger difference between the two, the rate of diffusion will be higher. Smaller solutes again increase the rate of diffusion. But what if there's a thicker membrane? That means there's more distance to travel, which will slow down diffusion. Similar to that is surface area. Increasing the surface area would increase the rate of diffusion. So these are just some of the different factors that can affect the rate of diffusion in general. But what if the substance is water-soluble and not lipid-soluble? It means it can't get through that lipid bilayer, so it needs another path. And that's where proteins come in. So integral proteins, they can form channels. They can form pores, which are open at both ends for things like water. Now these are called aquaporins. These are water channels. They have a size limitation, so only water can get through. So for other water-soluble substances, integral proteins can form channels, like for ions, like sodium, potassium, calcium, and chloride, they have ion channels. Again, they're selective, so they have a size restriction, but they also have a charge restriction. If the channel is lined with negative charge, it won't let a negative ion through it, even if it's small enough to fit. So they are size and charge selective, and they can also be gated. Very simply, that means they've got gates which could be open or closed. Open gates means ions can go through. Closed gates means they cannot, even if there's a gradient. So even if there's a concentration gradient or a difference on both sides of the membrane, if the ion channel is closed, the ions cannot pass through. But if the gates are open, they can move along the gradient from high to low. There are different types of gating, like voltage-gated channels, where the opening and closing of the channels would depend on a change in the membrane potential. 
This is like those voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels that we see working in the action potential. They could be ligand-gated, like with hormones or neurotransmitters, where after they bind, the channel opens and allows ions to pass. A classic example for this is the acetylcholine receptor on the motor end plate. When acetylcholine binds to its receptors, it opens the channel, allowing positive ions to move along their concentration gradient, like sodium, it moves from high to low concentration. Channels could also be mechanically gated, like where pressure or stretch determine whether the gates open or not. So through open channels, when ions move, yes, they move along a gradient from high to low. They have a concentration gradient, so that's from higher to lower concentration. But since they are carrying charges, they can also have an electrical gradient. If one side of the membrane is positive and the other side is negative, a positive ion would move from more positivity to less positivity, and a negative ion would move from more negativity to lesser negativity. These electrochemical gradients are important when trying to understand so many things like the resting membrane potential, action potentials, and things like that. Now we saw how channel proteins work, but some substances need to be carried across the cell membrane, and they use proteins called carrier proteins. The carrier proteins, they transport substances from outside the cell to inside or the other way around, depending on which way the concentration gradient is, but they still move from high to low concentration along the gradient, so it's not to be confused with active transport where it goes from low to high. These carriers are used for substances like glucose, like the glute transporters that's facilitated diffusion. Amino acids also use carriers to move across the membrane. This kind of carrier-mediated transport, it can get saturated, which means after a while, as the concentration increases, all the binding sites, they fill up. So it can't transport anymore. The rate of transport has reached its maximum, and this is called the transport maximum. This kind of saturation wouldn't happen with simple diffusion because there's no carrier. And those are the different ways that diffusion can happen across the cell membrane. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.